So as we just discussed in the previous segment, the Supreme Court was more receptive than many might have expected on the question of whether Donald Trump has immunity for his official acts as president. And of course, that opened the floodgates for the court's many critics on the left to not just criticize the justices, but to attack the entire institution. Far left observers went wild on social media. The rule of law is over, a corrupt Supreme Court by right wing money. The Supreme Court doesn't even exist. It's an arm of the GOP. OK, look, I disagreed with how the court has handled this. I did not think, as you heard me say, that the court should have agreed to hear this case in the first place. This was a delay tactic from the Trump team. I think that the lower court's opinion addressed all of the questions in a narrow way. And the answer should be obvious, that no president has absolute immunity for criminal acts. And even after some skepticism from several of the right-leaning justices, I'm confident that that's what the court will find. They'll draw the line, right? But I also completely disagree with those who've suggested that this proves the court is illegitimate. There's no question, this is a very conservative court. Any judge who tells you, we just decide things on the law is ignoring the reality of human nature. There's no such thing. Everything involves some intersection of law and other principles. But on the flip side, there's a lot of evidence to show the Supreme Court is not just determining cases to come out in one way. Numerous recent decisions, politically charged cases, have gone against Republicans. Just this week, the court showed once again, not blindly beholden to partisan politics. Monday, the court ruled against Arizona Republican Senate candidate Carrie Lake. Did you know that? She'd filed a lawsuit with a former Arizona state legislator to try to block electronic voting machines from being used in Arizona, arguing they were susceptible to hacking. Lawsuit was dismissed in federal court. This week, the Supreme Court decided not to take up the case, so that decision stands. None of the nine justices dissented. Two other recent decisions. Back in February, high court threw out a lawsuit brought by three Republican members of Congress, including Marjorie Taylor Greene. House members were challenging sanctions they were slapped with for defying the congressional mask mandate during the early days of the pandemic. Green had racked up more than $100,000 in fines. The penalty, which was upheld by the House Ethics Committee, a D.C. federal judge tossed the case. Appeals court upheld the decision. Supreme Court, again, refused to hear it. It also refused to hear an appeal, by the way, from several Trump-aligned lawyers who were sanctioned for making baseless claims in a 2020 election lawsuit. Sidney Powell, Lynn Wood, other attorneys were hit with more than $175,000 in sanctions for making claims about the 2020 election that a Michigan court determined were frivolous. Powell and the others argued the penalties were improper. A U.S. Court of Appeals upheld them against Powell and Wood and the Supreme Court. Again, we're not going to hear. Look, it's true. These are not the big cases, right? But rulings like these should at least enhance faith in the Supreme Court. And yet many in the left-leaning media have used a sort of hyperbole when the court agreed to hear the case that undermines faith in the courts that we need to serve as the final word. The legitimacy of the Supreme Court, by the way, is at stake. And I know that Justice Roberts, the Chief Justice, is often reported to be someone who cares very much about the legitimacy of his institution. He appears to have, uh, you know, really dealt a blow to the credibility of the institution. This is BS. You are doing this as a dilatory tactic to help your political, uh, your political friend. It's just flagrant, flagrant bullpucky. And they know it, and they don't care that we know it, and that's disturbing about the future legitimacy of the court. They are pushing this country right to the brink of a fundamental crisis of legitimacy and of credibility, not just of the court, but of the whole democratic experiment. Oh, no, no. It's that talk that leads us to the brink of a fundamental crisis of legitimacy. And by the way, Democratic political leaders have been saying it, too, about the Trump immunity case and other recent decisions from the high court. I feel very, very strongly that the credibility and stature of the Supreme Court has crumbled. The Supreme Court is illegitimate. It is corrupt. They themselves have been destroying the legitimacy of the court, which is profoundly dangerous for our entire democracy. They look like partisan hacks, I'm sorry. And it's, uh, it's a great concern to me, a great concern to the preservation of our democracy. Again, why can't you just disagree with the court's decision to hear the case, right? But that doesn't mean 
I'm going to tell you these are cor all corrupt injustices and throw around words like illegitimate. You know who else doesn't agree with those labels? Recently retired liberal justice Stephen Breyer. In an interview on ABC this weekend, the former justice insisted these claims of overt politicization just are not true. I've not seen politics in the court. And I've been a judge for 40 years. I've not seen... You have not seen politics in the court. Not politics in the sense mm -hmm. in which I understood that word when I worked for Senator Kennedy, mm -hmm. Ted Kennedy, when he was a senator. No, that isn't there. That just isn't there. When the left starts saying that the courts are illegitimate, they sound a whole lot like, well, Donald Trump. He blasts and tries to delegitimize almost any judge who rules against him. Our courts have to be respected, or we're on the road to anarchy. To help to hear the partisan critics play fast and loose with words like illegitimate is a real problem. And if you take the time to examine the Supreme Court's body of work, you'll see that that's unfair. Yes, hearing this case delayed Trump's trial and maybe will ensure the federal case never happens. And no, they did not need to hear it. But when the left screams about the court being illegitimate, it will come back to bite them. It eventually will apply both ways. And I promise you that that is a grave disservice to all of us.